Hello everyone and in today's video we will be discussing about placenta. We will be mainly focusing on the classification and the formation of placenta. And finally we will discuss about placenta previa. So what is placenta? Placenta is nicknamed as the fetal lung. And this is a term that is self-explanatory because it provides oxygen for the fetus and removes its waste materials. And the placenta has two parts. It has a maternal part and it has a fetal part. The maternal part is called as the decidua. And the fetal part is mainly the part of chorion or the chorionic villi. So now let's move to the classification. Depending upon the shape of placenta, there are several shapes out of which we will discuss four main shapes. First one is a discoid shape where it has a disc shape. Sometimes it could also have, have a bidiscoidal shape. That is the shape of two discs together. This is one shape. Or the placenta could be lobes, lobulated, containing several lobes. The placenta could also have a diffuse shape. And there would there could be fenestration. Fenestration means holes inside the placenta or depressions. So these are the four main types. As I have said earlier, there are several other shapes. It could have a round shape, an oval shape. Several other shapes are possible, but uh, these are four important shapes. Now, depending upon where the umbilical cord is inserted, again there are several different types. We'll discuss four of them. If this is our placenta, if the umbilicus is inserted at the center then we say the placenta is central. If the umbilicus is inserted not in the center, a little away from the center, then we will say that this is a paracentral placenta. Now the umbilical cord may also be inserted at its margin and this insertion is called as marginal insertion. Sometimes what happens is that the umbilical vessels in the umbilical cord, uh, it will furcate and divide into several branches with which then get inserted into the uh, placenta. So such a placenta is called as a furcate placenta. So these are some of the important classification. There is also another, uh, there are still other types such as velamentous placenta and so on. Uh, we'll be discussing about these four types. Now moving on to the penetration of uterine wall. So we know that after implantation, the placenta formation will take place. Now depending upon how much depth of uterus is involved, whether the placenta is located within the endometrium or within the decidua basalis or whether it would extend up to the myometrium or whether it would involve the whole uterine wall. Depending, depending upon that, placenta is divided into three. So if the placenta is present within the, uh, is present deep to the decidua basalis, that is within the endometrium, we call it placenta accreta. So placenta accreta means the placenta extends deep to the decidua basalis. If the placenta involves the myometrium, then it is called as placenta increta. The myometrium is involved. And if the placenta involves the whole of uterine wall, we will call it as the placenta per creta. So the whole of uterine wall is involved in placenta per creta. So that's about the classification of placenta. Now let's move into the formation of placenta. The diagrams which I have drawn here, those are enough for your examinations to score good marks. So focus on these diagrams. We have actually discussed uh, these. Uh, we have actually discussed the formation of placenta in the videos on the first three weeks of life. All we are going to do in this video is combine them and revise them. So and uh, just review them. That's what we are going to do. So what is the first figure which I have drawn here? In the second week of life, we know that the embryoblast will develop, the inner cell mass will develop into hypoblast, epiblast, amnion, and yolk sac will develop. And we also study that outside the embryo, an extra embryonic mesoderm will develop. So the pink color here is our extra embryonic mesoderm. And we know that outside the extra embryonic mesoderm, there is a trophoblast which will develop into two parts. That is an inner cytotrophoblast and an outer syncytiotrophoblast. And outside of it, we have our uterine endometrium. The name of uterus changes after the, the name of endometrium changes after the implantation into decidua. So this green color here is our decidua. Now, as I have said earlier, what happens is that our trophoblast will develop into an inner cytotrophoblast and an outer syncytiotrophoblast. So this explains our second figure. On top we have the decidua and lowermost we have the extra embryonic mesoderm. Then what happens? In our video on the second week we had said about this that is within the lacunae, the, uh, within the syncytiotrophoblast, lacunae will develop and these lacunae will start to get filled with maternal blood from the uterine blood vessels. So the spiral arteries slowly start to invade into the syncytiotrophoblast. So lacuna formation takes place 
with maternal blood then what happens after the invasion of lacunae with after the invasion of the maternal uterine vessels what happens is that the cytotrophoblast will slowly start to invade into the syncytio trophoblast so there will be invasion and this invasion when we discussed the week, uh, second week of life we had said that this structure over here that is this invasion if we take a cross section what we would see is that in the center we have our cytotrophoblast and surrounding it we have the syncytio trophoblast and this structure is called as the primary villus so the formation of primary villus occurs within the first 14 days of intrauterine life uh, it is filled with maternal blood the lacunae now what happens next in this figure what we notice is that the extra embryonic mesoderm it will start to invade into the primary villus which is our next step and now if we take a cross section how would it look like so in the center we'll have our extra embryonic mesoderm and covering the extra embryonic mesoderm we have a cytotrophoblast and outside of it we have a syncytio trophoblast what was this structure called this is our secondary villi this structure is our secondary villi now with the development of secondary villi what happens is that the cytotrophoblast will completely encircle uh, we see here that the cytotrophoblast will form a cytotrophoblastic shell over the syncytio uh, trophoblast and with this formation we now have our secondary villus uh, this is our secondary villi and the space that is present between these villi they are called the intervillus space so the development of secondary villi and the intervillus space starts to take place and after the development of secondary villi what happens is that the fetal blood vessels which we have marked here the fetal blood vessels will slowly invade into the secondary villi now if we take a cross section of this structure what will we see in the center we have our fetal blood vessels surrounding it we have our extra embryonic mesoderm outside of it we have our uh, cytotrophoblast and peripherally we have a syncytio trophoblast what was this structure called this is called as the tertiary villus so with the formation of tertiary villus the uh, placenta has actually formed and the space between them as we have said earlier that would be our intervillus space now it's time for us to define another term that is placental barrier what is placental barrier placental barrier refers to the barrier between the maternal blood vessel and the fetal blood vessel so here this is the maternal blood vessels and this is our fetal blood so the barrier between the maternal and the fetal blood is called as the placental barrier so let's see what constitutes a uh, placental barrier firstly we have the endothelium of the fetal blood vessels right and then we have the extra embryonic mesoderm the other barrier is our cytotrophoblast and finally we have the barrier of syncytio trophoblast so our placental barrier is constituted by the endothelium of fetal blood vessels plus our extra embryonic mesoderm plus the cytotrophoblast and the syncytio trophoblast so this is the placental barrier which is formed in the first trimester in the last trimester what happens is that the uh, only the syncytio trophoblast and the endothelium acts as the barrier that happens uh, by the third trimester now there are two terms that we need to define one is regarding the maternal part and the other is regarding the fetal part we had actually defined one of these terms uh, during our lectures on second and third weeks so first one is the chorion what is a chorion a chorion is this part that is a chorion consists of the extra embryonic mesoderm plus the cytotrophoblast plus the syncytio trophoblast so if we number them and our chorion is consisted by or it is composed of the extra embryonic mesoderm the cytotrophoblast and the syncytio trophoblast these three constitutes our chorion and obviously this is related to the fetus or well, this is this forms the fetal part of uh, our placenta now another term is the basal plate so what is the basal plate the basal plate is constituted by the one by the decidua next by the cytotrophoblast and thirdly by the syncytio trophoblast so this combination is called as the basal plate 
so these two terms and it is related to the maternal part of placenta so these two terminologies are important that is the basal plate and our chorion now what happens as the fetus grows as the fetus grows the tertiary villi will actually branch out and it will branch out like the branches of a tree so the figure which i have drawn here the two lines what are those two lines representing the upper line is our basal plate which is the maternal part of placenta whereas our lower part is our chorionic plate which represents the fetal part of part of our placenta now if we have a blood vessel in the tertiary villi this tertiary villi what happens is that it will start to branch out into several branches and th that is what happens as the fetus grows now as they branch out the villi we call the primary or the stem of the villi we call it the stem villus and this stem villus will give rise to ramus or that is rami villi and this rami villi will in turn give rise to several other branches which are called as the ramuli villi so that's how the tertiary villi start to branch out giving from a stem there will be rami and from ram by several other branches called as ramuli villi are formed and finally this is our placenta now what are the structures present in this placenta we have already discussed about them so this would be of course our stem and from the stem we would have the rami so let's mark it out this is our stem and this one would be our rami villi and these branches would be our ramuli villi now there are two parts to specifically mark here one is the placental septa three parts uh, the first one is the placental septa this septum over here is our placental septa and this region over here this is the maternal cotyledon whereas the inner region this one region this inner region is called as the fetal cotyledon now what does the maternal cotyledon contain the maternal cotyledon may contain two or more villi with their inter intervillous spaces so that is what is found in a maternal cotyledon now what are the villi and uh, intervillous spaces so we know that these are our villi and the space between them these spaces this could be one intervillous space similarly this is another intervillous space this is another intervillous space so one maternal cotyledon may contain two or more villi with their corresponding intervillous space whereas what is a fetal cotyledon consist upon so this is our fetal cotyledon our fetal fetal cotyledon is composed of a single stem villi a single stem villi with all their branches all their rami ramuli uh, and the blood vessels present in them they constitute one fetal cotyledon so a single stem villus with its branches constitute a fetal cotyledon so that's about placenta now let's speak a, a few sentences about umbilical vessels and about placenta previa there are two umbilical arteries and one umbilical vein now the umbilical artery arteries usually carry oxygenated blood blood but for the fetus the uh, arteries carry the deoxygenated blood from the fetus whereas the umbilical vein it carries the oxygenated blood from the mother towards the fetus so there is a reversal from what we know normally so that's about umbilical vessels now moving on to our topic of placenta previa what is placenta previa usually the placenta is located in the lower upper segment of uterus so our placenta gets inserted into the upper segment of uterus so let's draw a diagram now usually this is our upper quadrant and below we have the lower quadrant this is where the normal placenta gets implanted or the normal fetus gets implanted and the embryo gets implanted in the upper segment of uterus so the placental development takes place in the upper segment of uterus if the placenta or if the embryo gets implanted in the lower segment of uterus or anywhere outside actually by definition anywhere outside the uterus we call it placenta previa uh, anywhere outside the upper segment of uterus we call it the placenta previa so by that definition there could be two categories right one is extra uterine that is outside of the uterus itself and the other one is intra uterine placenta previa so extra uterine means it could involve the fallopian tube 
the ear the ovary the abdomen pelvis so on intra uterine we'll discuss about it there are actually four grades so when we speak about the intra uterine placenta previa depending upon their location it could be of four grades so grade 1 2 3 and 4 what are these four grades the first one is in the upper part of lower segment so the this is our region that is the upper part of lower segment this becomes our grade 1 then the grade 2 is implantation occurring at the lower part of lower segment that is our grade 2 the third one is implantation which partially occludes the internal os so the internal os of the cervix it is partially occluded by the implantation of the embryo if the cervix is dilated uh, the uh, fetus does not occlude the internal os and grade 4 is completely occluding the internal os this is a grade 4 so once again to revise our four grades are grade 1 on the upper part of lower segment of the lower uterus grade 2 is lower part of lower segment of uterus grade 3 means partially occluding the internal os if the cervix is dilated the internal os opens up whereas grade 4 placenta intrauterine placenta previa means completely occluding internal os so uh, i guess that's it for this video in the next video we'll discuss about twinning